Hey guys, welcome back. Today we got a pretty special video because we have a new 3D printer to unbox. And the printer that we got is a Flash Forge Adventure 3. So this is supposed to be a very friendly printer to get started with. So in this video, we're gonna unbox it, set it up, and do our first print. All right, so let's get started. All right guys, so I got this printer from Flashforge USA and it only took about a couple days to get to me, which was really quick. So this is the box that it comes in. As you can see, it's not huge, you know, but it's not tiny either. And the reason for its size is because it's pre-built already and ready to go. So let's start unboxing this thing. So I just got a spatula here. All right, so as you open the box, you can see there's some stuff right here on top. We do have some tools here and some lube. We also have a little filament for testing. And here we have a manual with an after sale service card. And that's another thing guys, when you buy from a reputable company like Flashforge USA, you're gonna get you know good customer service, especially they're here in the United States. And here we have the power cord. All right, so that looks like that's about everything up here. Let's go ahead and pull this carton off here. So here we can see the printer bubble wrapped. So let's go ahead and pull that out. And that's everything for the box. And so here is the printer, the whole size, which is a really nice size. And it's bubble wrapped all the way around. So let's go ahead and take all this off. Wow guys, this thing is actually a little bit smaller than I thought it would be. And that's a good thing because the bed size on this thing is still very, very good. And it looks like it's completely all enclosed and that's pretty awesome because i think we can be able to print you know more of the materials that we wouldn't be able to like abs and petg with this machine so it looks like we have a lot more unwrapping to do here they got this thing really nicely packed so we got stickers everywhere so it appears to be like there's a door here and look at that. So let's go ahead and squish it together a bit and see if we can, there we go. It does slide out. All right. All right. So it's really tight in there. So ease it out. All right. And so here we can see all of our parts in there. So the bed is on the bottom here and it's really low to the ground. And just by looking at it, it doesn't look like that this bed even adjusts. And it moves around in there really easy. That's very interesting. I'm guessing it does all the adjusting on its own. All right, guys. So let's take a look around the uh, printer here. So here we have a clear window on the top. And that's pretty cool because you can look down in there and you can see what's happening on the top if you wanted to. And it is fully enclosed. Like it's completely enclosed. So, so that's made probably to retain the heat inside the machine. That way you can print PETG and ABS and things like that that require an enclosure to have a better adhesion and just a better print quality overall. So here in the front, as you can see, we have the logo here and a nice door. So that's really cool that it has this little door here and it is magnetic. And there's two little magnets right there. So on the front here, it looks like we have a LCD screen and I'm pretty sure that's a touch screen LCD. Here we have the USB where you can plug in a flash drive to bring in your files. So let's spin it around. And you guys can see the size. It's actually a very nice size. It's not huge. So here we have, looks like the spool holder tray. Okay, so it's just a cover. And the spool holder tray is inside. So this is a pretty interesting design in here. It looks like we have some kind of filament detection over here of some sort. Not sure exactly how that works or what that is, but that's interesting. I'm guessing it tells you whenever the filament is out right here. And here we have the extruder that pushes the filament through into the hot end. And this is where you would load it right here where this little arrow is. And definitely an interesting design. So this cap goes in there really easily. You just line up the bottom 
and then it clicks in. And here it kind of shows us how to load the filament. So here on the bottom we have the AC plug where we plug it in and the power button on and off. And it looks like we have a little fuse in here also. So in the back of the printer, it looks like we have a little bit of vent holes here. Here we have a little sticker that tells us about the printer and the model number and things like that. And down here it looks like an ethernet port maybe. So here in the manual we can see that 26 where there's that port and it is the ethernet port. So you can connect your printer straight to the ethernet cable. All right, and so now we're on this side of the printer and here we can see Adventure 3 and this is what the model number of this printer is. And look how cool that looks, guys. This little window here you can see through the side. So it's a very attractive little printer. I definitely like the way it looks. I love the white. All right, guys, so let's take a closer look at the inside here. So here we have the bed and the bed travels just back and forth. And then over here we have the extruder and it goes up and down and side to side. And as you can see guys, there are actually two Z-axis screws on this printer. There's one on that side and one on the other side there. So that's very nice that it has a dual screw. So another pretty cool thing about the Adventure 3 here is that it does have a removable bed. So once you're done printing an object, you can pull this top sheet off. And you can see here there's like some kind of button here and I think all you do is just press on it. Okay, yeah. So you release it by pushing on it a little bit there. And then it just slides out. That's what it looks like and look how thin that is guys that is ultra thin and it is a little bit flexible too so you should be able to pop them off right easy the prints that you make on this so i'm not sure exactly what kind of material this is but you can kind of tell in the grain there maybe you can tell that it's some kind of fiber like either fiberglass or carbon fiber or something like that i'm not sure exactly it seems very durable though and so there is an aluminum bed here right underneath and it's you know on some springs here and the idea here is that you push it down just a little bit to start sliding it in. Now if you don't hold the bed at all, you'll kind of push it to the back until it stops and then it'll slide in the rest of the way. And so not only does this bed come out, but it also is a heated bed. And that is awesome because after using a heated bed, I don't think I ever want to go back to a non-heated bed. It's so much easier to get print started and they just stick better. And it just seems like a much better experience with a heated bed. And this printer here has the heated bed option also. And also, guys, it has a really good size bed, which is 150 by 150. And I think you can print 150 tall. So that's a pretty good size cube there of area that you can print. It's a size that can accommodate about 90% of the things that you would print most likely. So I want to show you one more feature that I didn't even realize this thing has until I noticed it. And it's right over here. That is a camera. So there's actually a camera on the side there. And I'm guessing that either you can look, let's say you're away from the printer and you want to see what you're printing. I'm guessing that's probably what it's for. I'm not sure if you can actually record, let's say time lapses or anything on it, but that would be interesting to see. But it does have a camera. That's really neat. So here we can see the hot end and the bottom tube just goes in there. And that's where your filament comes in. Here we have the power cable, I guess feeding to the hot end there and on this side we have a fan here you can see and that does the cooling and probably the blowing down at the part as it's printing and there you can kind of see the tip there and it's kind of hard to see guys but there is two LEDs right there you can turn on and off so you can see a little better what you're printing so as you can see guys this printer is full of features and it seems like it has everything you need to get a good print and that's obviously the most important part of a 3D printer is getting a good print. So let's quickly look at the side here and here we can see we got support Wi-Fi and USB stick. We got also support for printing through the cloud. Here's our build volume of the plate and it's 150 in each direction. So here we have a removable heat platform which is the bed there and we can print ABS PLA filament. So here is a detachable extruder. Okay, so here it looks like we can detach the extruder here, the hot end. So somehow this piece right here detaches from the assembly here. And I'm pretty sure these little buttons here have something to do with it. And the last part here is we have the flexible build plate and that's what we looked at already and it's definitely flexible. So that makes it really easy to pop off the prints. All right guys, so we looked at all the details of the printer here. And I must say, it's very, very nice little printer and it seems very friendly overall. And so far you can see we didn't have to do much only to get it out of the box. So let's go ahead and uh, connect the power cable to it and see if we can turn it on and uh, maybe we can go ahead and load the filament. So here on the side of the printer, 
we're just gonna go ahead and plug in our power and then we're gonna hit the power button and as we can see the light came on there in the, on the bed and our screen is showing us adventure 3 there okay and it's playing the sound all right guys so let's quickly look at this screen here and what the functions that we have here so we have a build so if we click that we can see we have eternal storage and that's how much is still available i'm guessing 6.63 so here the next part we have the usb so if you want to bring in your files through the usb that's where you would do that and on the bottom there we have the cloud so if you click on this you can see that we have a test box right there that we can print and we'll do this when we get our filament loaded and so we click the back button to go back so here we have tools so here where you will connect to your network you can preheat everything if you click that then you just need to click start and then we have our settings here so this is the status of what's going on with the hot end there so that's the temperature of the hot end the bed and then that's your filament there here you can choose your language and they have quite a few here you can calibrate the height on the z-axis to the bed if you need it to be closer so what it's doing is homing which is on the very top and then to the side there and the bed is homing to the back so now it's coming back down and so now you can see that you can calibrate it either higher or lower if you wanted to get closer or farther away from the bed so you would do that here and then you'd push OK. So, But we're going to skip this because we don't know yet if we need to do, even do this. So if we click this button, it'll home. Here on the bottom, you can see that we have one of three pages. To go to the next page, we just click that little arrow. Here we can move the printer manually up and down or side to side. So here we have the camera and it's on auto mode. It looks like you can control your camera settings here. Anyway, so we're just going to leave that on auto until we can figure out how that works. So here we have the filament check. I guess we can turn that on and off. And that's our light, as you can see right there. So here we have the buzzer sounds. So you can completely, I guess, turn it off or, or turn it on. So I guess this would be off and then this would be on. So I guess we'll leave it on for now. And here you can factory reset the whole machine. And here you can check for updates. So going back to the main menu here, we have the about button. And if we click on that, that'll just tell us everything about our printer. And so that was the tools. And the last one we have here is the filament. And that is what we need to load and unload our filament. So we're going to go ahead and do that next. All right, guys. So here we have the filament. And as you can see here, they include 0.3 kilograms of red PLA with the machine. And so installing the filaments very easily. Just take that door off. So the filament reel just goes in there just like that. So it's pretty simple to put it in. All right guys, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this filament out. And the reason for that is because it's a little bit hard to get to this extruder here. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna stick your filament in there. And before you do, make sure you cut it on an angle so it goes in a little easier. And so here on the screen, we're gonna hit load. The extruder here is gonna pull the filament through slowly once this hits the temperature that's required and you can see how quick guys that warms up that's very quick all right so it has warmed up to the temperature it needs to and now it's drawing the filament in so what we're doing is we're waiting for the filament to go around and then go come out out of the tip there and once it starts coming out of the tip then we'll stop the load process all right guys, as you can see, it's coming out and it's coming out pretty quick. So it looks like everything is out. So it looks like we can stop it now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna push okay here and that should stop it. Now to unload the filament is very simple. All you're gonna do is click the change. And so one that, that gets preheated. So what it's doing here is it's pushing out the filament itself. So like right now I'm ruining it back into the roll. The extruder is pushing it backwards. And there it goes. So unloading on this machine is very simple. It kind of does the job for you. And you don't have to pull it out or anything like that. So we're just going to push OK here. And so now it's asking us to change the filament. So, so it's not just unloading, but actually changing the filament. You just kind of like feed it into it and it will grab it on its own. So at first I thought, you know, that part was a little bit ridiculous. Because you couldn't get to it very easily at all. But now it makes sense because you don't have to do that at all. It does everything for you. 
So now we're just gonna wait till it comes out out of the hot end and then we're gonna stop it and that's it. All right, so let's go ahead and print our first print which is the test cube that's included in the software here. So I'm just gonna click build and then we're gonna click here on the internal memory and here we can see a 20 millimeter box, that's what it says. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that and the printer is gonna start printing. So our bed is heating up to 50 Celsius and the nozzle is gonna be somewhere in the 200s. So we're also gonna to listen to the printer and see how loud it is when it's you know printing. And so far it's been very quiet. So it's telling us here that it's gonna take about eight minutes to print this, which is pretty quick. And there it goes. And you can see guys how quiet that is. I'm very, very close to the printer with the microphone. And you practically probably can't even hear it. So it's a very quiet printer. I think they advertise at about 45 decibels or so. And you guys can see that light is actually pretty nice because you can see what you're printing. Especially if you have a dark room, that definitely will help a lot. So it appears that the bed level is good because the print is sticking and it seems to be level. So we're going to take a little closer look at that once it's done. So the print is getting close to being done and one of the things I want to mention here is that with the FlashForge software you can see that the object that you're printing shows up in a little picture up here that's pretty cool and pretty neat. And as you can see it's done and it's going up and it sings us a little tune there and here it says build complete and we can go ahead and push OK on that and we'll slide this out and here you can see the cube guys. So the top was only a couple layers thick that's why you can kind of see through it and plus this filament is, is kind of like a see-through filament or some somewhat transparent so this is still warm but i'm gonna go ahead and flex this thing and see if we can pop this cube off so let's see how good this works okay so the cube definitely popped off so once i flexed it the edges broke loose and just the center was barely holding on and so here we have a little perimeter and that pops right off easily too so on the bottom here we can see that the level was pretty good and the thing I like about it is that they didn't print a raft is they went ahead and printed on the bed because you know that just shows that the printer is very accurate from the get-go to start printing straight on the bed so this color here is kind of hard to tell because it's transparent plus it's red but you can see the bottom layer is very decent just by looking at it I think that I would go just a little bit lower on the hot end there with the calibration so yeah guys it's kind of hard to tell but here you can see the the wall it's actually very very good I would say pretty much excellent so the reason you want to print this cube in the beginning is you want to make sure the machine is running good before you print anything larger than this so now that we've printed this little test cube and we know everything is fine we can go ahead and print something much larger on here and that brings us to the next part which is the software that we'll have to use in order to print with this thing. So FlashForge has its own slicer which is called Flash Print and that's what we're going to use to bring any 3D models that you would want to print on the printer like this. You'll bring it into Flash Print and that's where you will slice it and then send it to the printer to print. So let's just take a few seconds to look at the Flash Print software so that way you can better understand. All right, so we are in Flash Print and this is what it looks like. And you're gonna need to pick your printer, which is the Flash Forge Adventure 3. If you weren't prompted from the beginning to pick it out, you'd go here to the print and then machine type over here and then you'd pick out all the different ones that they have here and this is the one on the very top is the Adventure 3. And so what you're looking at here is a box of the build volume that you have on this printer. So it's 150 millimeters this way, and then 150 millimeters that way, and then 150 millimeters tall. So here on top you have three main buttons to load a file, and then supports, and this is where you would print, or do the final slicing, which will make you the code for the printer. So here on the side here, we just have navigation, and uh, we'll go through all these real quick. So let's go ahead and load something. So anything you download from the internet is going to be STL files. So let's go ahead and just pick a Benchy here. So this is kind of like the benchmark of testing printers, little Benchy boat here. So we're gonna go ahead and print this on the Adventure 3 and see how it comes out. So here on the side, we have the icon view. And if we click that, we can change the views. You know, or you can go ahead and drag it around and view it. 
And I didn't mention guys that I am using a Mac OS. So if you're going to use Windows, it might be a bit different, but it should be very similar. So the next one we have here is move. And this just moves the, the model where you want it. And if you click on that, you can precisionly move it on the, on the build plate there to exactly where you want it. Or you can just click center and it'll center it. And if it's for some reason up in the air, you can click on platform and it'll bring it down. So the next part is rotate. And here you can rotate the model. You can either click these rings and rotate it how you want it. You know, you can go any direction or you can specifically insert them into here. So you can, you know, have the angle exactly if you need that. So I'm just going to go ahead and reset that. That way we're back to normal. So the next icon here is scale. And scale, you can just make your model bigger or smaller. Or you can make a specific axis bigger or smaller. So if you, if you unclick this uniform scaling, you can, you know, make this bigger in one direction. And as you can see, guys, the bench is growing in a very funny way. But, you know, that's one way to maybe put a little unique twist to a model if you wanted to. So we're just going to reset that and make that normal again. Click on Uniform Scaling. So here we have the Maximum button. If you click that, it'll automatically make the model as big as it can for the build volume which is kind of cool, but we don't want to print it that big. But I think I do want to print the Benchy a little bigger. So we're just going to go here and type in 150. And we have an 150% Benchy all the way around, as you can see. So, and we'll print our Benchy this size. So the next part is cut. And cutting is basically very useful if you have something large that doesn't fit on the platform, or if you have specific models that you want to print laying down. So you can cut this benchy, let's say, exactly in half. Well, let's just say like that. And if I click cut, you can see it cuts it in two pieces. Okay, so it doesn't appear to be that I split it down the middle, but in any case, you get the point. You can split things down the middle, and then you can lay these pieces down, let's say like this, and then you can print them one by one or even bolt together and then glue them together. You know, there are certain models that you might want to print this way because of the overhangs and whatnot else. So just keep in mind that you do have this cut option, which is really cool. And here you can choose, you know, how to cut it. And this is probably what I should have done because I did it just draw with mouse. So you can get pretty precise on exactly where you want to cut it. So I just click Command Z or Control Z, whatever it is, to go backwards. And we are back at our benchy here. So now let's go to the top and talk about the supports real quick. So here you can create supports for overhangs. All the areas that, you know, where the printer has to print in the air. And so whenever you have to print on the air, you know, you can have a little bit of a, like sag and stuff like that. So and what you need for that is supports. So you have a few options. You can choose tree-like or a linear. I usually like these linear ones better. So what you're going to do is just click out of support and the... Uh, you know, it kind of calculates everywhere that support is needed. And you can see there. And technically, these supports should just pop right off from the model, not too hard. So if you want to use tree-like supports, you can click on tree-like here. And that's what these look like. So it's just a different kind of support. So you can experiment with what you like. So, But we're not going to do supports. For this model, we're just going to print it the way it is because that is a test. All right, and so that's pretty much the whole thing, guys. You can you can see that it's not very hard to use this flash print, and it's pretty quick. So once you're happy with your model and you're ready to print it, what you're going to do is you're going to click on this print button here. And when you click on this, you're going to see this little window here. So here it shows you the machine type, which is your machine. On the top here, you have preview, print one slice. So you're just going to use preview. So if you had your machine already connected, you could, you know, check this and it'll, you know, print right away. But most of the time, you'll just use the preview because you want to make sure everything's fine before you print it. So here we have the material, PLA or ABS. So here, if you have support, you're going to enable them here or disable them here. So don't forget to enable that if you do want supports. A raft is basically something that goes underneath your model. It's like another print. It prints out. It prints that first and then it prints your model on the bed. Normally I don't use it, but if it's your first time and you're still unfamiliar with everything, you might want to enable this. And basically it'll just print an extra little print underneath your model to make sure that your model sticks good to the bed. But we're gonna go ahead and disable it. So here is the quality of your print. A lower quality means faster printing. Higher quality means slower printing, obviously. Now I found that the high is the best. 
efficiency for quality versus time you know but if you if you have bigger objects and you want them faster you can go standard or even low but you can experiment with all these and so here you have brim and what brim does is it just puts an extra layer of the first layer around your model so if you're going to have something really thin and you need more support on the very first layer you want to use brim but we're not going to use that either on the sprint and if you want to see more options you click on more options here and here you can kind of see the layer height which is the resolution here. So if I click on standard, you can see the layer height changes here. I would definitely not suggest printing in low because this is not gonna turn out very well. Standard would probably be your best bet if you wanted it pretty quick. But high is the best quality for the time. And hyper just takes way too long, but it's up to you. But obviously you can experiment with all this. So shells is how many lines you have on, a, on the outside wall. And three is definitely a good number. And this is how many layers you have on the bottom and top. So on the bottom there's four and on the top there's five. This is how it's preset with the printer. So we'll just leave everything like that. So the infill is 15%, which is a good number, but I kind of like that at 20. So I'm gonna change that to 20 and we're gonna leave the rest like that. This is the print speed. It's how fast it'll print. The lower the number, the better the print, but obviously much slower, but 40 is definitely a good medium. And then the temperature. So this is about basic for PLA here for the bed and then the uh, extruder. And then the cooling fan, we got automatic here. So, so I'm gonna change this to 205, print a little cooler. And if you, if you change any of the settings, you can click save configure here and it'll save it. That way when you come back, it'll all be the same. So yeah, once you're happy with all this, you just click okay and that will slice the model and save it to your computer so well, i'm just going to go ahead and save it to the desktop so i can find it and here you can see guys this is the code that it spits out for the printer the gx so we're going to save this 3d benchy right here so what it's going to do is it's going to slice it and save it to our computer so when it slices it it shows us up here in the corner how long it's going to take it's six hours and 27 minutes and it's going to use up 12.8 meters of filament and if you want to know the weight of that, you just click this button here and it tells you that's 38 grams. So we know the included roll is 0.3 kilo, uh, kilograms, which is 300 grams. So that's more than enough, obviously. So we have plenty of filament and we can go ahead and print this. But on the side here, you can see we have this little scroll here and you can see all the layers. So my computer is a little laggy, but you can kind of tell there if you're kind of curious of how it'll print throughout the print. So, so basically we're done here. Now, if you have your printer connected to your computer, you can go ahead and click this print button here and it'll print. So, but we're gonna go ahead and use the file that we saved to the computer. So we're gonna do it the simple way is we're gonna put it on a USB stick and then we're gonna take it to the printer. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the USB into the printer here, just like that, power it on. And now if we click on build, so now we have the option to click on USB and here we can see all the files on there. So here we have our 3dbenchy.gx file and all we gotta do is click on it. And so here it shows us a little bit of information. It says how long it'll take and things like that. So we can either delete it, copy it into the printer or go ahead and start printing. So I copied it into the printer. So now I'm gonna go back and go to the internal storage and we can see our benchies there. So now I can unplug this and our benchy is still there. And the reason I want to do that is because I don't want to print off off of this little card. I'm not sure if it brings it in and then prints, but in any case, I'd rather put it in the internal storage and print from there. So now if I click on this, I can go ahead and push print and our print has started. So it'll be pretty exciting to see what our benchy comes out to be like. So I'm going to go ahead and run a little GoPro time lapse for you guys and we'll see what that looks like. All right, so our Benchy is done. So let's take a look at it. And this is what it looks like. So it has quite a bit of wisps all over it. And basically what that is, that's either a retraction needs to be a little bit more or possibly quicker speed between retractions. But we use the default profile and this is what turned out. So these wisps here, they are very, very fine. And just a 
like a hair dryer or blow dryer will get rid of them right away so this is not that big of a deal here so let's go ahead and see how the flex bed works again here so I'm just gonna flex it and you can see guys how it lifted up so definitely loving this bed design so let's take a closer look at this benchy so it'll be a little bit hard to see because of the transparent filament but you should be able to see on the shadows there and if you look at the sidewall here and look at that light you can see how good a reflection that is and how nice the layers have stuck and even right here whatever lines you see there that's just on the inside that you can see through the transparent filament very good print guys very good print but it's not perfect because here up front you can see there's something funny right here a little bit and the first few layers for some reason are not perfect either but still overall it's excellent and here you can see the bottom it looks like I still need to get a little closer to the bed so here in the back there's supposed to be some wording but it'll be really hard to see on this color so this box right here looks very clean on the bottom there and the top is also really good so overall I would say this is a pretty high quality print here so if we just got rid of those little wisps everywhere it would be perfect and you can see on the overhangs here that the cooling is good and there's nothing funny anywhere so printing out this benchy proves that this printer has the capability of printing a very precise all right guys so let's conclude on this flash forge adventure 3 so from unboxing it to printing is very easy and the only thing you have to do is put the filament in and one of the things that surprised me about this printer is that you don't even have to level the bed leveling the bed is actually the biggest issue with any 3d printer because if you don't have the bed level you're not going to get good prints so this design here makes it where you don't have to mess with the bed leveling or anything of that nature the only thing that you will have to do calibrate the hot end there closer or farther away from the bed according to what you need so and that was pretty simple as you saw in the settings but from the box to the print it's very simple so this makes it a very very friendly beginners printer and probably the easiest printer that i've ever seen to just start printing so this is a big plus for people that are just starting out and even for kids but something like this would be easy as plugging it in turning it on and just printing and so not only does the adventure 3 offer simplicity it offers also a great bed size so for most people this would be a great bed size because the form factor is not very large but you're still able to print most of your things and even if you did have to print something larger you could always split it in the slicer as we looked at earlier and print them in two different pieces and then connect them together so all those things the ease of use the printing size the heated bed, the totally enclosed, simple but attractive box here. The touch screen is nice. So everything just works for this printer. And also the looks, it's very attractive. If I can give you this angle right here, you can see how nice that looks. Having this window here and this door here. A very nice looking machine. So overall guys, I would give this Adventure 3 a thumbs up. And it ticks all the boxes of everything you would want in a printer. It honestly includes <laughs> everything. And I know we didn't touch everything, but there will be another video coming of this printer where we're going to look at the wireless connections and the cloud services and including that little camera inside. So, And plus, we're going to be printing a lot more things and there's going to be projects to print. If you're interested in to see how this thing does, then stay tuned and there will be more videos with this printer. As I know this video is a little long. If you made it this far, then hit that like button. And if you're interested in this printer, then I'm going to leave some links in the description. It's from Flashforge USA and that's where I got it from. So so check those out also guys if you enjoy videos like this and you're not subscribed to this channel then hit that subscribe button and also check out my other videos i have a bunch of 3d printing videos and a lot more to come all right guys and as always thanks for watching and i'll see you on the next one peace